It's been more than a year since a toxic train derailment devastated the small Ohio town of East Palestine. The initial fire and controlled burn of chemicals a few days later left residents there concerned for their health and safety. And after much anticipation and some criticism, President Biden visited the community for the first time today. President Biden met with officials on the ground who updated him on their ongoing cleanup efforts. Working with the state, we've tested the air, the water, the soil quality, deployed teams of health experts, provided emergency loans for local businesses. But it's not done yet. There's more to do. The president pledged support and assured residents that he is holding Norfolk Southern accountable. While there are acts of God, this was an act of greed that was 100 percent preventable. But for former East Palestine resident Lonnie Miller, the president's visit is too little too late. It's been a year. We needed him last February. He could have stepped up and demanded more help for us and not force us to go beg Norfolk Southern for help. The rail line runs across the street from the home Miller shared with her husband and son, who grew up admiring the train. She says her family's feelings changed last year after the fiery train derailment. The thing that we once loved watching out front, you know, from our living room window, is now the thing that I'm most terrified of. I am just terrified that it will happen again. She's now packing up the last of her belongings from the house she lived in for 30 years. Her family took out a loan to relocate 10 miles away. Our house has been on the market now for over 100 days. We haven't had a request for one showing, not one. And that kills me because I loved it so much and nobody wants it. Miller says she's grown distrustful of Norfolk Southern and resents that her local and federal governments have directed her to ask the railroad for help. We are being told to go to them, the ones that did this to us. We shouldn't have to go to them for help. Since the derailment, Norfolk Southern has pledged to make it right and says it has given the town over $100 million in community support, including a $25 million upgrade to East Palestine City Park. Some residents are receptive. I think the railroad's doing the best they can. They're putting more money in the park than it's, it, the whole town's even worth except for the love of the people and the town. So you got to give them credit for that. They haven't left town. They're not leaving town. Could have had somebody and just closed up and got inside that railroad and hid from it all. They didn't do that. Some people spend the rest of their life trying to chastise them. Some of us want to just move on. And then there's other people who want to fight about everything. And it's, it's very divided right now. But for Barb Kugler, a 30-year resident of East Palestine, watching the division and her once close-knit community play out has been painful. She says she's most concerned about the perception of East Palestine, now best known for being the site of a toxic train derailment. I don't think this town will ever be the same. I think we're going to be feared for a long time, and I hate to say that but people are going to believe what they want to believe. After the derailment, just blocks from her home, Kugler turned her crafting hobby into a business, selling her wares at a shop just outside of town. But she says she's noticed an uneasiness in her customers. I have run into some people who say, oh, well, where are you from? And I would say, oh, well, East Palestine, and then they would put my items back because they're afraid that there's something in the fabric. And it hurts. For Ashley McCullum, the fear is warranted. So these are the symptoms. So they have experienced almost everything. Concerned that her community's health issues were being ignored, she started compiling the symptoms residents said they were experiencing, including her own. She lived two blocks from the derailment site. When we first started going back in, I could only last in town for about 10 minutes before having serious issues. I mean, it, early February, I was vomiting after I went into my house. So it was that intense. For the past year, McCollum has been living in a hotel nine miles outside of East Palestine with her boyfriend and seven-year-old son. She's hesitant to sell her home. She says it's not safe to live in. 
Norfolk Southern has been paying for her stay and some of her expenses, but she's not sure if that will continue. People are walking into their homes having nosebleeds. They're having chronic problems, memory problems. This should be taken care of differently. It feels like you have to beg the person that did this that's saying, oh no, it's all in your head, nothing is wrong, to do something for us, and it's just not okay. For now, McCollum and her family live in limbo with an uncertain future ahead.